Hello, land seekers. If you are looking to buy land, I've got properties to show you. You've got to see these 34 properties that are some of the most affordable properties in America. I'm Scott from LandMoto.com, and this channel is about helping you to make your land ownership dreams a reality so you can start living your dreams today. Today. So why is it that you're looking for land? Why? Comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Why are you looking for land? I'd love to know the comments and tell me, tell me what you're looking for. You see, one of the biggest hurdles to buying land and land ownership is the actual financing of it. And one of the things that a lot of people talk to me about is the whole financing side of this thing. Because, you know, there is a breakdown in the banking system when it comes to land. And here's the breakdown. You see, if you're out there and you're looking to buy a, uh, you know, a, 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 a waterfront property for six figures, no problem. The bank's going to be willing to, to work with you on that. But a lot of the land across the country is more affordable land, you know, typically less than $50,000. You can buy a nice piece of land in America for, you know, less than $50,000, but it's all dependent on obviously the size, the acreage and other things. But here's what happens with the banking system. What happens with the banking system is that um, you, you go through this process and uh, the banks want to see basically, uh, you know, uh, well, they want a minimum mortgage is what, what it comes down to. So they only want to finance you if your, um, if your mortgage is going to be greater than a certain amount. Typically, it's $50,000, $75,000. So if you're dealing with some of the lower price land that we have in the country, well, then really your only option is to do cash financing, cash to pay cash for it. And what you'll find a lot of times with the realtors per se is when you look at realtor ads, what's happening is, is the realtors go out there and they list their properties. And, you know, it, it always says for, for cash only, you know, cash deals only. And there's the breakdown because if unless you have the cash ready to go, what happens is you go and you find this property that's available for sale, and guess what? They probably may not be able to do it unless, again, unless you have the cash. Because if you go to the bank and go, hey, listen, I want to buy this piece of land for thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, the bank is going to say something like, well, sorry, we don't do mortgages for less than you know, fifty dollars to $75,000, something like that. So here's, here's the deal. All of the properties that I'm going to show you tonight, all of them that you're going to look at tonight, they are all available with seller financing, or it's also called owner financing. And what that means is that you're dealing directly with the owner of the land. You're not going through a bank to finance it. You're not having to, you know, wait for the banks to approve you. Because you're dealing with the seller, because you're dealing with the actual owner of the land, that means that there's no credit check. That means that there's no background check, no income verification, no banks and all their silly little rules that say, well, it's got to be this amount or that amount. And what you're going to find is that the down payments on a lot of these properties is just ridiculous. It's something that you can do. And what that means is that you can find the land now that you want for your dream property and you can start the process. And I guarantee you, when you deal with one of the sellers directly, it's probably one of the most simplest transactions you'll ever see in your life. You'll, you'll love it. Now, here's the other thing I want to tell you before we get going. Tonight, you're going to hear me talk about four buckets and I'll, I'll, I'll reference what these four buckets are. But you have to find the right property for what you're trying to achieve. So I, in the comments, I see that Rose says that she's looking for a space to have livestock and animals, homesteading, and tire pain rent. That is a very common, um, common uh, reason why people want to buy land. And Rose, thank you for sharing that in the comments. And look, I look forward to seeing what the rest of you write as well, too, because I think that's important that we understand you know, it, once you're crystal clear on what you want, oh man, it's going to be so easy. Johnny says, we want a place to settle down, have a place uh, with our kids. 
that they can call home. Uh, yeah, away from the craziness. That's right. So let's get going tonight. So I'm going to cover 34 properties over 11 states. And really, again, all of these properties are available on landmoto.com. That's the website. And, you know, don't rush over there right now because we're going to spotlight some of these properties. And the 34 properties that we're going to look at tonight, these are all from what we call our platinum sellers. And the thing about our platinum sellers is these are the, these are the folks that are, that are really out there doing it. These are, the, the, these are the, the people that I know and I trust enough to, to share with you. So let's, without further ado, let's go and let's start looking at some of these, uh, some of these properties, okay? So our first state up tonight is going to be in the state of Arizona. And uh, my little graphic thing already fired off while I was talking, so I'm not going to redo it. Now, this particular property is in Apache, Arizona. This is uh, one, just over a one acre property. And when I say one acre, it's 1.04, give or take a little bit. Uh, look at the total purchase price of this property. 78, um, 78, $1,782. I must be blind. $1,782. $99 down, $99 a month. Look, I keep a $100 bill here. And in every single time I do this show, every Monday at 8 p.m., I always talk about the $100 down. And this is a great example. $100 down, $100 a month. For 14 months, you you can literally own this entire property in, in a matter of months. It can be all yours. Now, when you look at the picture on here and you look at this picture, you'll see that there's power in the area. Why is that important? Well, because if you're looking, like Johnny said, he's looking for a place that they can call home. I'm not saying Johnny wants this property, but when you're when you're looking for a property that you can call home or Rose for, for homesteading, the thing is, is that you want property that has power in the area, right? That's important to do. So what, what Rose and what Johnny said in the comments, you guys would be what I call bucket one, bucket one property um, investors. And what that means is that you're looking for that homestead place that you can start today. Like you're ready to get going today. You're not looking forward to the future per se. It's a today thing and that's a bucket one property. Now, this is a bucket one property. Now, what makes this a bucket one property is the fact that there's power in the area. It's buildable. If you look, let me make this picture bigger again real fast eh, right here. So if you look in the right, uh, the left-hand corner of that picture, you'll see a white structure there. Well, that is in fact a, a, a building that that um, you know is is a kind of a residential building there. So you've got building already in the area. So here's a property that you can have some of the infrastructure in. Great particular property to get going with. And again, also before I move on to the next one, all of the properties that we'll talk about tonight, you can see them all right here. Man, look at that. That's too, I can't even do it. It's right there, up at the top, landmoto.com forward slash deals. So you don't have to go there right now. Additionally, I just want to say this. On all of these slides that I'm going to show you tonight, you'll see where it says learn more at lmoto.ws. That's a short code back to our particular website. And that code there, just write down. Write down the code that you want. And then after tonight's show, if you see a, show, a property that you want to learn more about and dig deeper into, there's the code. That's how you're going to get to it, all right? So great one-acre property here, bucket one property. Bucket two property, what's that? That's someone uh, property that you can build on in the future, you know, a couple years, six months, a couple years away, bucket two property, this is it. Bucket three property, recreational purposes. You you want to go out there and camp on the land? This is a good one. Bucket four, meaning that you're a land investor. You're looking for a long-term investment. This is another bucket four property. So this one checks all the boxes, okay? It does check all the boxes. Let's look at this one. This one is also in, uh, well, I shouldn't say also, this one is in Navajo County. Just over an acre, just over an acre and a quarter, 1.33 acres. Another another one of these where it's $100 down and $100 a month. People tell me all the time, Scott, you can't buy land for $100 down and $100 a month. And you can. I see in the comments, the YouTube comments where people say, is this for real? It's for real. These are these are real deals. These are real properties. You can get the APN numbers and check it out with the, the county. Real deals, $100 down and $100 a month. Total purchase price on this particular property, $2,400. Now, for or, or you can finance it for 31 months. Now, let's look at this property. Let's make this thing big. And uh, here's what I want you to look at. When you look at this thing, just look. There, there's no power in the area. There's no, I don't see any power poles here. There is no, there is roads there. And um, if you're someone who's looking for something off the grid, bang, this is a great place for you. But if you're looking for a homestead, something that you can, you know, call home, no, this is not the right property for you. 
This would also be a good property for that future, but probably not a future buildable. This is a bucket three property, meaning that you're looking for something that you can use for recreational purposes. And then the other thing that this property is really good for is the ability to hold for the long term. That's a key thing, being able to hold a property for long term as a long term investment instead of gold or the stock market. This is what this is a great property to look at. Um, let's look at the next property. This one is in also in Navajo County. This is a two and a half acre property, fifty nine hundred dollars. Another look at what the look what my guys are doing. They're getting the message hundred dollars down, hundred dollars a month. They, they're getting the message that they get more attention when we do that because I think it's a good deal. It's less than six thousand dollars for two and a half acres. And again, this is another one that if you're looking to move on there today, not a good fit unless you want to do off the grid, off the grid. So if you want to be off the grid or maybe uh, survivalists, take a, take a look at this one. But if you're looking for that homestead, not a good one. But long-term investment, absolutely. Recreational for camping, absolutely. Future state, maybe. It all depends. This is a great camping property. Next one, in Apache County. Now, I talk about Apache quite often. And in Apache County, there's a there's a there's something that's pretty cool about this. And they, they, they capture this with, uh, with the headline here, campground, one acre campground. And see, the thing about Apache County is this. In Apache County, this is a county that does not have a lot of restrictions on the land. So what that means is that as you think about building restrictions, for example, there's not a lot of restrictions out there. There's also not a lot of restrictions per, per se that you can't live in an RV or camp in your RV on your property. There are some counties where absolutely you can't do that. We'll talk about one of them tonight, Costilla County, Colorado. Can't do it. But Apache County, they're very lenient in this case. Now, they do have a, a rule. You got to pick up after yourself. You can't go make a junkyard out there on the property uh, because you're going to get fined. But again, so again this, is, this would be like having your own one-acre campground. Bucket three, recreational uses. And by the way, I put all the buckets when you hear me talk about buckets, they're in the description below. So you can just scroll down, let's see what I'm talking about. But bucket three property, this is a great one. Long-term investor, bucket four, absolutely. Homesteading, bucket one, no way. There's no power. If you're an off-the-gridder, okay. Again, $100 down, you can do this property. $150 a month for 60 months. This, I love this area. I love Apache County, and um, we'll see. Maybe it's a good fit for you. Staying in Apache County, look at all those trees. Look at them. There's a lot of trees on this particular property. There is, here, can we make this bigger? There we go. Let's make this bigger. Over on the right side, look at that. You have a mobile homes over here, structures. Uh, you have the structures on the lower left side as well. What does that mean? What that means is that it's livable. You can you can live out there now. They have power. They do. So you can have power. Homestead, boom. Okay, bucket one, absolutely. Bucket two, future value, future use, absolutely. Bucket three, can you camp out there? You gotta look, you gotta look. Bucket four, long-term investor, absolutely. This is a great property in that case, but you, you know, you wanna make sure it's a good fit for you. And you'll see that there's, made, there's a couple different pricing options. This is what's cool about dealing with the sellers as well, is that you have flexibility. You have flexibility in the fact that you can almost name your pricing. You'll also notice that when you're dealing with the sellers oftentimes, that not only do you get the flexibility, but you also get affordability. And why is that important? I mean, we all have to be able to afford things. But the other reason it's uh, affordable is because they all try to make this less than a car payment. They really do. That's kind of the rule of thumb for most uh, landowners when they're trying to sell their land. It's just making it less than a car payment. And if you look, this is $400 down. If you went to Mr. Banker and said, Mr. Banker, I want to get a $6,000 loan. He's going to be like, forget it. No way. Can't, they can't do it. But then if you go, Mr. Banker, I only want to put down $400. He's going to say, no way. You got to put down 20%. That's $1,200, by the way. So you'll see, you're not even putting down 10% here. And that's the beauty of working with the seller is the flexibility that's on there. And being able to kind of write your own, write your own deal. A few years ago, I don't know, it's been, I shouldn't say a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I was learning about, I was learning about the power of working with sellers. And I was learning from this guy. Um, he was basically teaching me that when you're working directly with the sellers, 
the sellers have such flexibility, you can literally go and write your own mortgage. And I was intrigued because during the time I was in the process of buying my first house, I was, I was, I felt like I was getting beat up by the banks. If you've ever dealt with a mortgage for a bank, it it's not fun. It banks are not fun. I really don't. I don't like the banks. Okay, I don't like the mortgage process or the loan process with the with the uh, with, with the banks. I hope you can see that. I believe. I truly believe that it's got to be. There should be easier to to be able to afford your dreams and without having to go through the through the mean banker. I don't think that's right. So the thing is, um, when when I was talking to this guy's name's Terry, when I was talking to Terry, Terry was basically telling me, "Look, you can go and write your own mortgage," and I was shocked. I was shocked. I I, I had a hard time believing it. And Terry was right. I mean, you could literally go and find find somebody that was willing to work with you and just sit down with them and say, "Hey, listen." This is what I can afford. This is what I can put as my down payment. And this is what I want to make for my monthly payments. And that was probably some of the best advice I ever got was the fact that you can go and sit down with a seller, be honest with them, and literally like write your own mortgage. And what I just told you applies to basically every every property that you see on Landmoto, but bigger than that. This is a bigger thing. I would say that anytime you see land for sale, that there's nothing wrong with going and asking them and proposing to them that they do owner financing or seller financing, because it's really one of the only ways that they're going to be able to sell their land is if they owner finance it or seller finance it. And once you know that secret, once you know that secret, you'll start to see that no matter if you find any property, make them an offer with seller financing. The worst thing that they can say is no. How many times have you been told no in your life? I get told no all the time. So do you, by the way. So go ask. And that takes me to the next property. This one's also an Apache kind. Now, this one's five acres. I want to go back one slide. Let me go back a slide for a minute because I want you to look. This property right here in Apache County, the one that I just left, is a one-acre property for $6,000. And one of the things that just, that just makes people go crazy sometimes when it talks about land is the fact that when you look at this property where this one's a five acre property and the last one's a one acre property, well, this one's $8,000 and the other one is $6,000. Now, why why the big swing there? And what it has to do with is it has to do with the infrastructure that's around there. Because uh, when, when you think about this one, this one has infrastructure that's there. It has the power there today. It's It's got other, other people living around there. So this is a a property that you can do something with today. The property that seems to be a bigger bang for your buck, my gut would tell me that this doesn't have the the infrastructure, the power's probably not there. So again, if you're looking for that one acre or for that that bucket one property of living in a place today, probably probably not going to happen. And I see Mike's looking for Oregon and Wyoming. Uh, we will get to Oregon tonight. I don't have any Wyoming tonight, but on our website we do. And Al says he's interested in buying some property looking in Nevada and Arizona. Well, we're talking about Arizona right now. And I also have Nevada tonight, you'll see. So just hang in there, uh, Al. Thanks for joining you guys. So when you look at this property, you'll see, again, flexibility, down payment, let's talk. Uh, 36, 60, or 72 months. But here's a five-acre property for $8,300. Treed, Treed in Arizona. That's sometimes hard to get to. People, people absolutely would love this property. Here's another property. This was in Yavapai. These properties, people uh, talk a lot about as well. A lot of people ask for these forested lots in Yavapai. So four acre property. Uh, so you have a four acre property here, uh, less than fourteen thousand dollars, five hundred dollars down, and two ninety seven a month for fifty five months. This is a beautiful property. I mean, it, uh, this one picture might not necessarily do it justice, but look at the elevation there. You have you have a flat area, and then you got a slight elevation there. The trees, the trees are the deal here in Arizona. So check this one out in uh, Coquino, Arizona. Now, Coquino, where is Coquino? Coquino, Arizona, is like the home of Flagstaff and close to Sedona. I think Sedona technically might not be in that county. It's close, though. Beautiful part of America. Beautiful part of Arizona. Sedona, the Grand Canyon is in this, the southern rim of the Grand Canyon. 
This particular property is, um, I believe that this particular property is just south of the Grand Canyon. $6,000 for one and a quarter acre property. $149 down, $129 a month for 72 months. There's structures there. Notice the structures in the picture. That means it's livable. Bucket one, absolutely. Homestead, moving there today, you got it. Bucket two, future state, you want to move there in the future, you got it. Check that one off the list. Recreational, 50-50. You might want to check that one out. Long-term investor, you're just looking for a place to park some money. Bucket four, you got it right here. And by the way, all the buckets are uh, mentioned below. All right. Um, let's see. Our next uh, property is in Mojave County. Mojave County is just just south of um, Clark County, Nevada, which is home to Vegas. And you'll see that this is a one acre property, six thousand dollars, ninety nine dollars down, and you can do ninety nine dollars a month for seventy two months. It is possible. So nice property. Again, will it fit and do what you want to do? May or may not. You got to do a little bit more research to figure in on it. But bucket one, living there today, I don't see it. Bucket four, long-term investor. Bucket three, absolutely. Absolutely. Bucket two, eh. So I would say the the latter two buckets, you're in there. You're in like Flynn. Not so much the first two. All right, 2.35 acres uh, in Mojave. Again, Mojave's just out. You're looking at maybe an hour from Vegas. Uh huh. $99 down. I should just do the $99 show. $99 down, $99 a month for 40 months. Uh, this one is, is two lots together, 2.35 acres. What I like about properties like this is what's cool about this is the fact that you have two lots that are side by side. And just because you buy them at the same time doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sell them at the same time. So these would be splittable because they're already split. You're buying two separate units, even though they're together and at the same time, you can always sell one of them later. So that's a nice little um, strategy for later on or for an exit strategy. Now in the chat, Mike, Mike talks about, and I'm glad you brought this up, Mike, is the mineral rights, okay? Do you own the mineral rights? Well, every property is gonna be different, but mineral rights are typically harder to get. You see what happened was, Way back, way back when the railroads were going through the country, the railroads went through and the railroads actually stripped away most of the mineral rights. Now, there are some people that will tell you that you have mineral rights. Uh, I, always, I always get a little hesitant when I talk about that only because of the fact that the only way that you can verify that you own the mineral rights is to hire what's called a landman. And the landman will go through and look at all all of the transactions ever on that particular property, it's a very thorough search because it goes to the beginning of time. And that landman will go through there and determine who owns the mineral rights. And what makes mineral rights even more strange is the fact that you can split mineral rights off and um, like someone might end up owning half of the mineral rights and then they sell it and they think they're selling half the mineral rights, but they sold half of the half, half of the half of the half of the half. So mineral rights are very, very weird. And so, you know, you can check with the county, but the county is probably going to say to you, well, you need to hire a landman to do it. Um, it typically, typically the mineral rights do not, do not transfer unless it specifically says so in the deed and, uh, and, and or you have a, a, a mineral rights deed. And even then, I'm kind of like, eh, I, don't, I don't really know. I, the land man would be the only source to be able to find that, okay? All right. Great question. Thanks for asking that, um, Mike. And Alan and Johnny, thanks for joining as well and chiming in because you guys are right on there. All right, changing states. Let's change over to we are going to go to California. I see that Rose was saying California is ideal. I have one property on this feature list tonight. I got more properties on the actual website, landmoto.com. Uh, in California, but let's go look at these properties that we have here in California. If it will change for me, there we go. It's in Kern County, five acres in Kern County, less than $13,000, a lot of flexibility when it comes to the down payment and the terms. Where is Kern County? Southern California, San Bernardino area. This one looks like it's more remote. So uh, Rose said she's looking for that homestead spot. I'm not so sure this is for you, Rose, but you know what? Again, if you go over to landmoto.com and search for what you're looking for, 
There you go. Yeah, Edwards Air Force Base, I believe, is there. So, yeah, you're right. All right. Okay, change of states going over to Colorado. We're going to see a lot of land tonight in, in Costilla, Colorado. This is our first property. Costilla is one of the most popular, um, one of the most popular counties that we're going to find in Colorado. And what makes it one of the most popular is the fact that it is one of the most affordable counties in Colorado. Absolutely. It is um, the thing about uh, the thing about Costilla is that it's there's flexibility in there. There's different price points. So I always think of Costilla as kind of having three price points. You you start off in the valley down by the Rio Grande River and the valley land is very, very affordable. Typically five acres, you might see them for five to seven thousand dollars. Now, as you go up towards the mountains, what you'll find is that the five acres that are up in the mountains, that's kind of the mid mid tier. And then as you get into what's called the SDCR, that's kind of the top end stuff that can get pretty pricey in terms of still still very affordable for mountain land, but pricey for that particular county. You might find five acre properties up there for thirty thousand dollars, something like that, maybe even thirty five thousand dollars. So, uh, yeah, you can you can definitely see where that's going to go. This particular property. They didn't list the price, the overall price. One acre, one 1.6 acres. Uh, we could do some math on here. One less than $100 down. $99 down. 199 a month for 55 months. Here's the thing about this particular property. One, it's forested. It's up a little bit, right? So you're you're dealing with a higher elevation property. You're not down the valley. Look at that view that's right there. Make this bigger. Look at that view that's right there. And yes, this is a satellite image, but look, you got, I think that's Mount uh, Blanca back there. Beautiful view of the particular property. Uh, great opportunities to, to kind of grow there. I think this is a great price. Could you move out there today and make this your own? Absolutely, you could. Bucket one, check it off. Bucket two, future value, bucket, check it off. For Costilla County, forget bucket three. No way, no way. I wouldn't do... You, if you're looking for off the grid in Costilla, don't do it. It's, it's going to be, you, you'll tell me that you hate it because they're going to make it miserable for you. And if you think you, you're going to go camp there, you're not because they, 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 don't, they don't want it there. That's the county rules. Alan says, would Rio Grande Ranches be considered the valley? It would be the, it, I consider it the valley. It's down there in the, the flatter part of it. More affordable. I like that area. I like being closer to the river. But some people like the mountain view. Sometimes, I, like, I'm from Florida, man. I don't know that I like the mountain view because that means I got to deal with snow. I don't mind looking at the snow, but I'd rather not have all the snow piled up there that I can't function, but eh, each to their own. All right, next property here, five-acre property. Uh, down, now, this is closer down in the valley, $9,000, $9, $1,000 down, one hundred eighty a month for 50 months. Now, I... I don't really have any conversations or I don't set the pricing on these things, but I will tell you that um, if this is a property that I was looking at, I would talk to the sellers and say, hey, what can we do on the down payment? I think that would that would be, uh, I would talk to them about the down payment here. It seems a little steep to me, but they might have to do that for whatever reason. I don't know. But again, you have flexibility there. So make sure that you're talking to them. And just because you see it says $1,000, you go, well, I don't really want to do $1,000 down. Talk to them. They're flexible. They're people just like you and I. Five acres of land, staying in Castilla, down the valley, $8,000, $399 down, less than a car payment, $188 a month for 60 months. This is a nice property. Dirt road access through there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Rob Rob says, uh, it's Rob, basically says, I believe they have shallower wells in that area too. They, they I believe that they do, Rob. In the Rio Grande Ranches, the wells are shallower. Okay, uh, staying, here we go. Look, look at this, Rio Grande Ranches right here in Costilla, five acres, $6,300, 300 down, 100 a month for 60 months. Bam, there you go. We were just talking about Rio Grande Ranches. Here it is. I like this particular property. I like it. You can get more pictures on there too. Just here, let me go, go back. Seven, 78, 575 is the number on that thing. Uh, yeah, just go do some more research on that one. Yeah, I think you'll like it. All right, going over to Florida. Florida is like on fire right now. And I don't mean like it's burning down. 
Florida is Florida, Tennessee, and Texas. These states are like blowing up with demand for real estate right now. And it has to do with the fact that in Florida or in New York, New Jersey, the Northeast, you have people flooding down to Florida. You got people from California flooding to Tennessee and Texas. The U-Hauls are making a run for the border. And so the the inventory in those states is getting even tighter. So you'll see, like, normally we have a lot more Florida properties, and I think there's just two. But let's take a look at these particular properties. Every week I talk about this county. It's Port Charlotte, Florida. This is one of my uh, favorite counties in Florida. It's on the Gulf Coast. I grew up on the Gulf Coast of Florida, West Coast Florida. I just did a vacation weekend down the coast a little bit. I love this place. 18,900 buildable lot, corner lot on the on a nice road there. $750 down, 388 a month for 72 months. This is a property that's uh with with Jamie. She's a fantastic uh land seller, very flexible. We'll walk you through the process. Highly highly uh reviewed she is. Just people tell me all the time she does a fantastic job and there you go. Uh, it's Rob says, are these ranches just subdivisions or are they HOAs? I've noticed some rural properties that are in HOAs, which doesn't make sense to me. The ranches out there in Costilla County, they are not uh, in HOAs with the exception of, um, I think, I don't think Wild Horse Mesa is, but uh, Forbes Park. Forbes Park is in an HOA, but it's very affordable HOA. It's ridiculously cheap, but they also provide services. It's not your typical HOA. Uh, Forbes Park, I think, has something to do with the water rights or something like that, but it's extremely, extremely affordable. Okay. Um, so, yeah, f- here, we got this great particular property in Florida. Uh, here's another one that's another, another example. Less than 100 per month. 299 down, and uh, this is in Highlands, Florida. Where, where's Highlands? Highlands is, you, you if you're familiar with Florida, maybe you've heard of Lake Placid or Sebring. The Sebring, the 24 hours of Sebring, the auto race happens not too far from here. Uh, this particular property would be a great, not a bucket one property. I don't see you living out there today. Bucket two, future state, boom, uh, potentially. Bucket three for recreational or long-term investor. Bucket four, absolutely. These are great properties for you. Okay. Um, it's Rob also asked, any idea on the average price in Florida to connect utilities? So every area is going to be a little bit different, but most of the utility companies in Florida that I'm familiar with will actually pull the, pull the lines to you and they may not charge you for it. Where out west, they tend to charge you by the mile. Here, they tend to kind of put it into their infrastructure budget, but also they might even uh, finance it over time a little bit. Uh, and I don't know what that would be because every county is going to be, every utility company is going to be a little bit different. A quick call to any one of them would be able to help you out with that. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, my slide is wrong here. It's not a Florida property. This is a Mississippi property. I have one property for you in Mississippi and uh street street property houses around want to move to warren mississippi bam let's talk about this one it's it's a fifth of an acre round it to a quarter acre no problem twenty five hundred dollars is the entire invest twenty five hundred dollars is the entire investment here so you're looking for affordable housing affordable land twenty five hundred dollars I know the government's passing out money. Maybe you have some stimulus money left over. Boom, you can buy the entire property. Now, this can start to go towards your your future value. You're not, you're not going to homestead on this thing. It's not, not large enough. But if you're looking for a buildable lot, this is it. And imagine $2,500. More so than that, this is where the bucket four comes in. Bucket four property because the bucket four property is a property that is a long-term property. It's that property where you're looking at this thing over the long term and you're realizing that the price of land continues to go up in America pretty consistently. And what what you'll see is that it outpaces inflation. A lot of people are worried about inflation right now. And what you'll find is that land in general tends to outpace inflation 
uh, typically by about three times. That's the way that that's the when you look from the 70s on, that's what it's been. Inflation's been around 2%. Land growth, the price of land has grown about over 6% year over year. It's, uh, some years is higher, some years it's less. So land continues to appreciate in value over the long term. Now let's let's bring in let's bring in this particular property. And now let's think about this as a long-term investment. Again, bucket four in my book. So in this particular case, we have an investment here that we can make. We can make it for a cash payout of $2,500 or they're flexible on their terms. But now, as this town develops further, what's going to happen to the price of this land? It's going to go up. A little inside secret, too, is if you look at this property, let's make it a little bit bigger. If you look at this particular property, notice that there's neighbors there. What I like about properties where there's neighbors is this is the fact that what I could do is you could buy this particular property, you could invest in this thing, and you could hold it. Ever want to know who you could sell it to? The neighbors. And the reason I say that is because if you had the chance to buy the land that's next to where you live and make your house bigger, your lot bigger, would you do it? Hmm. I think you would. I think we all would secretly as long as we could afford it. And that's where this thing comes in is because because you have a buyer there, because that buyers are those neighbors are there, you have a built in buyer. So you have an exit strategy. I did a video on the channel. It's called the five um, five mistakes that people make. And one of them is not having an exit strategy. So be sure if you haven't seen that, go back to the channel page and look for it's it's a picture of me going like this, something like this. And it says, like, don't do this. And it talks about the the five uh, the five things to avoid. And I'll be sure on the replay, we'll put the card up here, too, so you can go watch it. But essentially, that's a that's a great exit strategy. That's a big that's a big deal there. OK, so I like this pretty property. I've never had one on the on the show for for Mississippi. But now we do change over to Nevada. We were asking earlier tonight about Nevada. We, we hear some Nevada properties. There's a there's a part of Nevada that I'm absolutely in love with right now. I talk about it. it seems like I talk about it every single week. But th this is that northern strip of Nevada. That's the northern counties from basically from Reno over to Elko, Nevada. That northern northern Nevada. I think that this is I think this is one of the the hottest areas of of the country coming up. And and I'll tell you why here in a minute. I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it again. But when you look at this particular property, this is in Elko, Nevada. This property in Elko is a 20-acre property, less than $13,000. The down payment is $500, less than a car payment with a $300 a month payment, less than a car payment, 72 months. Let's talk about this one. Notice in the picture, notice that picture has BLM at the top of it. Make it bigger. BLM at the top of it. What does that mean? Bureau of Land Management. Government land. So we got government land there that we now have access to because who owns that land? You do as a citizen of the United States of America. It's your land. This land is your land. This land is my land. So the thing is, is that when you own this particular property, this 20-acre property, it's one on the north side there you're never going to have a neighbor no one's ever going to build on top of that because they can't and that blm land is 680 acres it's like having 680 acres of your own backyard if you're out there on your property atv bucket three you want to go out there and camp for the weekend you can bucket three you're out there ATVing, horseback riding, whatever. You have a big, large space, 680 acres, 640 acres, 640 acres. What is 640 acres? One square mile. Stand where you are today and look a mile away, mile away in every direction. That's 640 acres. You have one square mile around you. Never touch. It won't be touched. So I love properties that border the BLM land. I think that I just think that they're incredible. Okay. Um, Alan says, well, is this property landlocked? And it's not landlocked. And here's two reasons why. You'll see, first of all, there's a dirt road on there. Make it big again. There's a dirt road up there on the north side of it. But beyond that, the fact is, is that the BLM land gives you or guarantees you access to these particular uh, properties. And because you can, one, drive on the dirt road, you can also veer off and, and go right to your property. 
Additionally, what you'll find is that most of the properties there in uh, northern Nevada have a deeded access around the property, which means that um, typically it's around 15 feet of deeded access. So you have 15 feet on the south, east, west, and north where anybody can go driving. It's deeded access for everybody. So you have 15 feet on your property, 15 feet on someone else's property. So you have 30 feet all around uh, every single property where there's access. So you have road, road access in there. So great question, but no, it's not. In Elko still. Now, this one is closer to town, 1.13 acres. This is, uh, I think it's called Deer Creek. I don't, they didn't tell me what it was up here, but I think this is in the Deer Creek. Flexible price, $150 down one, uh, and $79 a month, so less than $100 a month. Great bucket for property. But again, look, uh, can we make that big? Let's look at this. So I'm looking at this picture right now, and you'll see that in the picture, you will see a structure back there. So you have... You do have some structures in there. They're kind of hard to see in this, this view, but you do have that. And um, so you, you have access to, you know, off the grid properties. These one acre properties are just outside the town of Elko, Nevada. So I, it's a great area. Let's talk about this one. This is one of my favorite ones from tonight. It really, really is. And here's why. The reason I like this particular property is it's in one of the Elko's close, Humboldt second, Pershing is my favorite county right now in terms of northern Nevada. And here's why. Elko is located just outside of Reno. So there's a couple of counties. You got Reno, uh, and then you got another city, and then you got Pershing. So you got a very small area in there. The distance from Pershing County, Nevada to Reno, Nevada is about 100 miles. So you have a 100-mile commute there from Pershing County to Reno. In Reno, there are some exciting things happening there. Number one, a few years ago, Tesla built their, um, built their, their, their battery factory there. Mega growth taking place in uh, northern Nevada and outside of Reno. The other thing that they have there is they actually have um, a government initiative taking place with the governor of Nevada driving change in the area. What's, what's he doing? He's realizing that people are bolting out of Northern California, the valley, you know, Silicon Valley. They're bolting out of there. Taxes and the pandemic just showed just how, what a mess it is. So they're bolting out of Silicon Valley. And where are the big tech companies going? They're going to Austin, Texas. So the governor of Nevada says, hey, we can't rely on gambling. We can't do it. It's not sustainable. Pandemic comes and we lose all of our revenue. It's terrible. It's a train wreck. So he said, look, we got to start focusing on technology. So he basically worked and he's working with companies to create smart cities. One of the smart cities is blockchain.com. It's a big company. They bought, they bought, yeah, see, Rob's like, wow, on this one. They bought 67,000 acres up there. They're building their own smart city with cryptocurrency and all this technology and everything. And it's going to be about 100 miles from Pershing County. There's something magical about 100 miles between, between growth cities. San Diego and Los Angeles, about 100 miles apart. Tucson and Phoenix, about 100 miles apart. Tampa, Florida, and Orlando, Florida, about 100 miles apart. You see, as those cities develop over decades, they will continue to expand out. Where are they going to expand? Back into California? Maybe. My guess is out, out the interstate towards where? Towards Salt Lake City. What's between Salt Lake City and, 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 and Reno? Pershing County, Nevada is right there. So that's why I'm a big fan of this particular state. This property, um, let me see if I can just do this real fast. Uh, 53082, hold on a minute. Elmoto.ws.53082. Let's go look at this particular property because I told you this is one of my favorite ones from tonight. And when you look at this particular property, you'll see that this thing has been, this thing, they, they went out, they had a photographer go out there, take a look at it. Let me make this bigger too. If a photographer go out there and take a look at the the, the property, uh, you have road access to it. It's 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 nice out there. Okay, um, 
All right, so we got some animal bones there or something. That's cool. Steaks, it is a staked property. There's your steaks. Okay, so you can see the survey stakes. That means there's a survey done. That's a that's a big deal on a 160-acre property, having a survey done. Dirt road access. Look at the car. Look at the car that the surveyor brought out there. He brought out like a little mini, I'm not going to say a mini SUV. He brought out a, a crossover, okay? So he got out there without having to have a four-wheel drive car. That's a, that's a, that's a win. Here's a neighboring fence, but look at the stake in the front of the picture. It's staked. It means there's a survey done. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. More fencing in there. Okay. More fencing. And you'll see there's multiple corners of the stake in there. So, you know, here's a drone image of that particular property. Just wide open spaces, 160 acres. And, you know, these guys, this is by uh, Jeff Jones, I think. Yeah, Jeff Jones. And the thing about Jeff is Jeff is Jeff is a cool guy. All right. Oh, what did I do there? Hold on. How did I make that go away? All right. There we go. Did layer on top of layer. I'm not sure how that's possible. Jeff's a cool guy. And, uh, you know, I know he's asking $8,000 there. Uh, you know, talk to him. I'm not saying he can do anything about that. But, you know, if you talk to Jeff, go, hey, man, this is what I can do. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep my payments here. This is what I'm trying Again, you're dealing with sellers, and when you're dealing with the sellers, guess what you got? You got, you got flexibility. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the information. Uh, bought first 40 acres last year. I'm seeing in the comments here. Learned a lot. Always glad to give information. Yeah, I mean, that's the way we all learn, right? Just by sharing our information. Um, yeah, he is. Jeff Jones is a knowledgeable guy. That's right. There you go. All right, let's, I think we're done change states. Maybe not. No, we're going to go back to Elko. Elko, we have a 10-acre property, 12,400, 400 down, 241 a month for 66, 241, 66 for 48 months. Okay, so we've talked about Elko. Uh, Elko is right in the middle of Reno and Salt Lake City. So in that, what I would call that growth corridor, I really think of that growth corridor. Change it over to New Mexico. We have a beautiful, few beautiful properties in New Mexico tonight. Let's go if this graphic would speed up for me. There we go. Luna. Luna, you're going to see a lot of uh, half-acre properties. So uh, $1,100 total purchase price, less than $100 down, and $199 a month for six months. Do you think, do you think, this is from Jim. Jim's the seller here. Do you think Jim would take $100 a month for 12 months? Betty Wood. Betty Wood. Flexibility. That's what you're getting. Another one in Luna, 10 acres now. So 10 acres, $14,000. Flexible on the down payment, $200 a month for 70 months. Okay, so Luna is going to give you some flexibility in there. Look at this property. This property is, is magnificent. It's the cover, cover picture from tonight. And um, 20 acres, $20,000. So people always ask me, hey, Scott, where can I buy land? for less than $1,000 an acre. Here you go, right here. This is it, land for less than $1,000 an acre right here with owner financing. That's a big deal, okay? Because you can, you can, um, you have the flexibility that you want, all right? Uh, is there any maintenance that needs to be done uh, if you just leave it as a bucket four? So Daisy, that's a great question. So bucket four, again, for those of you that are new to this thing, I put the bucket descriptions down in the comments below. But a bucket four property is one that you're just holding it for long term. You're just you're buying this thing and you're just going to let it appreciate over time, um, unless it's a city property like these rural properties that we're talking about. No maintenance. You don't have any maintenance. You just just let it be there. Let it be all the the, nat, the, the nature will let it continue to grow. Where you get into problems with a bucket four property is you buy that bucket four property and it's in the city limits. You know. And the city wants you to mow that lawn. And that's really what you have is you have to mow the lawn. So whenever I'm buying that bucket for property, I tend not to buy something in, in a city limits per se where I have to maintain it. I'd rather just have the natural growth of the, of, of the world, let the trees grow. So I think that's kind of the, the maintenance that you're talking about. Yeah. All right. Great question there. Valencia, New Mexico, half acre property, eight ninety nine. dollars Think about this. Bucket, this is, we're talking about bucket four, a great bucket four property. You're buying this thing for the long term. They don't make land anymore. And it's it's pretty cheap. One of the things that um, that 
even worries me sometimes uh, when I, I look at things is I look at this and I'm like, well, you know, is this the wrong time to buy? Because you start to see some price appreciation there. And um, I was watching Dave Ramsey not too long ago. And Dave was someone asked Dave, hey, should I sell my house? This is a couple weeks ago. Should I sell my house now and and hold off on buying another property until the prices come down? And Dave Ramsey's advice was, if you want to sell your house today, no problem, but do not wait to buy the next one. If you're going to sell your house today, go buy the next one immediately. And the guy said, well, isn't the price, aren't the prices high? And Dave Ramsey said, look, things you should consider. Number one is that there's, and since he became a realtor in 1978, he said, I've never seen the overall housing market decline. The overall real estate prices have not declined except one time, and that was in 2008. That was the black swan event of the financial meltdown. Are we ever going to get that again? Probably not in our lifetime. That's basically you know, the way he was looking at this. As the prices increase, will there be little bubbles along the way in certain markets? Yeah. I mean, certain, certain markets will become too hot, and then there'll be a bubble. You could argue today that there's a bubble taking place in New York City. I looked the other day. I saw that you could buy a, a co-op a one bedroom apartment in New York City in Manhattan for less than $400,000. Think about that one for a minute. These are places where these homes go, these these little co-ops go for outrageous prices, less than 400. I think it was like 3, I think it was 349 is what I was looking at. Is there a bubble in New York City? Yeah. Well, is New York City dead? I have a hard time believing that. It's dead today, it will come back, I believe. But see, that's the thing is even though you look at these prices, real estate continues to appreciate in value. When's it the best time to buy real estate? Same thing. Same as it when, when it's the best time to plant a tree. 20 years ago, second best time is today. So I look at this property right here, this $899 property, and I'm thinking, that's pretty dang cheap, especially for that bucket four property. Is it going to go up in value? Land in general continues to go up in value. Uh but, you know, there you go. Another, another one of these properties, this one is $50 down and $50 a month. I mean, it's ha half a hundred. And uh, what, see, th this, this kind of drives me insane a little bit. I'll just be honest with you. I don't know who the seller is on this one off, offhand. But when I see $50 a month for 50 months, I, I, that's where I would start to negotiate. You know, I can go a little bit more than that. We're not going to stretch that thing out. But if you're looking for an ultimate cash pay out the $1,000 for the half acre. Again, people ask me all the time, hey, where, where's the affordable land? Lunar, New Mexico, pretty affordable. All right, going over to North Carolina, this property in North Carolina, as we move east, now we start to look at some, some different types of properties because as we start to move into the east coast of, of the United States, we've looked at this one a few times uh, in the last week, one acre property in a neighborhood. That means that there's a property owners association in here. $25,000. So unless you're ready to build today or, you know, you're ready to get going and you want to be in this area, well, then you, you, you know, like this is to me, this is not a bucket for property. Uh, was it Daisy? I lost my chat here. Yeah, it was Daisy that asked about bucket four and she was asking if there's any maintenance. Like I would not buy if I was a bucket for long term investor, I would not buy in an HOA. I would not buy that because I get no value from from the services until you build when you build there well now you get the the community you know road improvements and stuff like that so uh, unless you're ready to build today or start utilizing that property i i wouldn't do it not in an hoa this particular property has access to the lake what does that mean there's actual boat docks within the neighborhood there's a lake there's a actual boat slips you get your own boat slip yeah if i'm ready to move to north carolina I'm looking at this property. This is a this is one that I would look at and I would consider, okay? All right, Oregon. We are asking about Oregon. Well, we, we're going to Oregon now. All right, so Oregon, uh, 0.64 acres, 24,000, flexible in the down payments, buildable property, bucket one, bucket two, you're not camping here. Bucket four, yeah, yeah This these, the first three of the four buckets are checked here. So absolutely. Uh, that one was in Klamath. Also in Klamath is a two, 2.4 acre property, uh, less than $16,000, 399 down, 289 a month for uh, 66 months. So 
Um, great, great long-term investment here too. Trees. Everybody loves trees. Uh, third, third of an acre, 0.37 acres, 4,800, $100 down, $100 down. One day I'm going to get a sound effect. I promise you guys, $100 down, $100 a month for 60 months. I mean, not a bad property, buildable lot here, buildable lot. Tennessee, we got, uh, we got some cool properties coming in Tennessee. They're not, I can't talk about them yet, but we got some cool properties coming in Tennessee, uh, shortly. I'll give an update on it in the future, but these properties are going to be between five and eight acres uh, in Tennessee. Uh, with ro- all of them have road access, none of them are landlocked. All of them are going to have surveys. That's a big deal. So these are going to be surveyed lots. They're going to be uh, road access, and it's the future. I really can't, shouldn't talk about the future, but not too far from Nashville and not too far from Memphis. So stay tuned for those. Here we have in Union County, Tennessee, a 0.59 acre property, uh, 19,900, 1490 down, 519 a month for 60 months. Again, it, this is pushing the edge of that car payment a little bit. It's a nice little bit of car payment, but you'll notice that this is particular. Let's make this bigger too. If you look at the screenshot, property is sitting there on top of the mountain in a neighborhood. If you want to learn more about this particular property, be sure to jot down that short code number on there to learn more about it. All right. Okay. Let's keep moving on. Changing states, going to Texas. One property in Texas tonight, I think. One property. Let's see what it is. Yep, that's it. One property. This is in uh, uh, Culberson, Texas. This is in West Texas. 10-acre lot. $11,000. $11,000. Again, another place where you can get $1,000 per acre. That's what this is, $1,000 per acre, basically. $250 down, $199 a month for 72 months. Now, just to the west of this is, is uh, a community called Sunset Ranches. So just to the west of this town or this county is uh, Hudspeth County. And in Hudspeth County is Sunset Ranches. Sunset Ranches are 20-acre tracks, and the thing about those particular tracks is that they are surveyed and they have road access to all of them. But they are they used to go for about twenty thousand dollars, and now they're going for about thirty three thousand dollars per 20 acres. So now, when I think about this particular property, it's just one county over. It's very very similar similar. 10 acres for $11,000. This is a steal. It, it really is a steal because that West Texas people, I, I mean, they're, the, the growth in West Texas is huge. And um, yeah, I, I mean, if you're looking for something in West Texas, this would be a great particular property. So be sure to uh, to, to check that out if that's something that you're um, that you're looking for, okay? Now, just as a reminder for you that all of the properties I cover here tonight, they're all right here at thelandmoto.com forward slash deals. And um, what I'm hoping is that I'm hoping that you maybe found a land connection for yourself tonight. And I want you to make sure that you continue to to explore this this education series on buying that land. Tonight, I mentioned that uh, that that video where the five mistakes that people make. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check out. Check out the video here and uh, keep your learning going. I will be back here next Monday night. And with that, Land Moto out. Take care. Good night.